The government's principle is plain, rational and consistent. It is this. To admit the middle classes to a large and direct share in the representation without any violent shock to our institutions of our country. I say, sir, that there are countries in which the condition of labouring classes is such that they may be safely entrusted with the right of electing members of a legislature. If the labourers of England were in that state in which I, from my soul, wish to see them, if employment were always plentiful, wages always high, food always cheap, the principal objections to universal suffrage would, I think, be removed. But, unhappily, the lower orders in England, and in all old countries, are occasionally in a state of great distress. We know that effect distress produces. We know that it makes even wise men irritable, unreasonable and credulous, eager for immediate relief, heedless of the remote consequences, that it makes them prone to believe those who flatter them and distrust those who would serve them. Every argument, sir, which would induce me to oppose universal suffrage, induces me to support the measure which is now before us. I oppose universal suffrage because I think it would produce a destructive revolution. I support this measure because I am sure that it is our best security against a revolution. I support this measure as a measure of reform, but I support it still more as a measure of conservation. That we may exclude those whom it is necessary to exclude, we must admit those who it may be safe to admit. We say justly that it is not by mere numbers, but by property and intelligence that the nation ought to be governed. Yet saying this, we exclude from all share in the government vast masses of property and intelligence, vast numbers of those who are most interested in preserving tranquility and know best how to preserve it. We do more. We drive over to the side of revolution those whom we shut out from power. Is this a time when the cause of law and order can spare one of its natural allies? Reform that you may preserve. Renew the youth of the state. Save property divided against itself. Save the multitude endangered by their own ungovernable passions. Save the aristocracy endangered by its own unpopular power. Save the greatest and fairest and most highly civilized community that ever existed. From calamities which may, in a few days, sweep away all the rich heritage of so many ages of wisdom and glory.